It's starting. Quiet, everybody. This is not a test. This is the emergency broadcast system. The commencement of the annual purge is about to begin. All government officials have been granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. We are talking 2025 Blood, White and Blue. Now this one is produced, written, directed and even has a small role for the man behind it, Josh E. Williams. Now I find this quite an interesting movie for a number of reasons. It's a kind of action horror comedy spoof film, which mainly is spoofing the Purge movies. But hold your horses if you don't like parody movies, because I'm not a big fan of parody movies. Uh, but you might want to check this one out. Now, um, I find the tone of this film to be somewhat interesting. Let me give you the brief plot synopsis and then we'll talk a little bit more. So 2025, this is a, a, a film with a somewhat of a political uh, agenda, so to speak, but in an interesting one. In this reality, Donald Trump has come back as President of the United States, obviously his next term. And in this universe, he has reinstated the purge. So we're led to believe, obviously, that once the purge existed, and clearly Donald Trump was once the president in this reality. So that has this, it sets up a kind of political kind of like edge to this movie. Now, the interesting thing with this movie, although it is a parody movie, I guess, and certainly marketed as such, it, it plays it reasonably straight. And the plot is kind of one you would, it wouldn't be surprised if you saw it in an actual purge film. So the idea being that <clears throat> Trump has reinstated the purge. Now it focuses on this Homeland Security officer called Bill, who is a Republican, he's a big Trump supporter, very much into kind of gun ownership, all this kind of thing, and uh, law and order. And he has been undercover with this kind of drug cartel and ends up kind of the day before the purge, you know, completing this big bust where they secure the, a great amount of money and drugs and things like this. And he is very kind of like uh, sort of taking charge of it and everything and he wants to secure the money whilst he sees other kind of like, you know, other people trying to want to get involved in things like this. And he suspects that because it's the purge of the next night that someone might try and come and claim this uh, this money which is now being held by the authorities. So he kind of essentially kind of hides it somewhere until the purge is over ultimately. Um, now, a little bit later we find out obviously he intends to spend the purge just at home with his family. He invites his friend over who is a kind of like a uh, another kind of homeland security officer from a kind of a rival agency and they're just going to sort of spend the, uh, the the purge you know at home trying to kind of keep out of trouble but these purges have other idea who have the idea at least that the uh, this officer uh, Bill has stashed the money in his in his house and they want to kind of claim it and do a bit of purging at the same time which leads to a kind of siege towards the end of the movie. Now it kind of sounds like a legitimate purge film, doesn't it? Um, and it kind of plays it somewhat straight. Although this is a parody film, and there are certainly moments of broad humour, it actually plays it far more straight than I was expecting. So let's talk about what I think works in this film. It's a very, very low budget film. And although this, I think, had this not been a parody, it's it, they couldn't have done it as close to the purge film as they could have done, because obviously with the laws uh, if you do a parody you are allowed to kind of like you know essentially not worry too much about the kind of copyright laws and i think it's how they've got away with this but it's it's the humor is not as prevalent as you would think so if you want to watch a kind of another purge movie albeit this is going to make very very low budget unofficial kind of entry it kind of does feel like it it kind of could be an actual purge film to be honest with you so it's not a bad idea for a, for an actual plot for a purge film, so I like that. I also like the some of the characters here. Uh, our kind of character of Bill, you know, he's a rough around the edges, somewhat kind of like uh, 
good old boy kind of, uh, you know, Republican and everything, but he still has, I think, some, some qualities that kind of doesn't make him a, a despicable character. There's other characters as well that I kind of like. There's a genuinely sweet romance between uh, Bill's, this, this, this main character, his niece, and his friend, this kind of younger uh, Homeland Security agent who is a little bit more kind of gun shy, a little bit more pacifist. Uh, and they have a genuinely kind of sweet kind of connection and a little bit of a romance, which I, th I thought was quite interesting because normally it's played up for, for kind of sex and things like this and, and flirting. But here it felt like a genuine kind of little love story in a way, in this weird kind of like purge parody film, which you felt like it's kind of a little bit of a genuine sweet love story here, which I found was quite interesting. And that's testament, I think, to these, these, these characters, these actors who do a fairly good job of making these kind of quite likeable, and I've got to say, kind of quite realistic characters in some ways. This is a strange movie, let me tell you. There are scenes here that I feel you could take out of a le le legitimate Purge movie. I mean, there's actually some quite longer sequences. They're kind of the drug spot at the beginning. You know, if that isn't really played for laughs outside of one joke about butt plugs, but the rest of it is kind of like played pretty, pretty straight. And the scenes at the end as well, uh, is, you know, there's some, the majority of that's played fairly straight. There's some character moments in the middle as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a low budget movie, don't get me wrong, I'll, again, I'm going to touch on that, but there are elements here that I think you can just, you know, that you kind of can get your teeth into. Another element I kind of quite liked about this movie is the way that it juggles its political kind of uh, storylines and kind of like ideas here, because it kind of takes pot shots at both left wing and right wing politics. So I found it interesting that this movie tries to be kind of somewhat moderate in ways, you know, and it's not kind of taking one political idea over another, instead kind of like, you know, taking pot shots at both, but at the same time kind of showing uh, positives about both. So the humour wise, there's some kind of funny gags here, there's kind of a few parodies of TV shows and, you know, and movies and things like that will get, you know, from like Predator, Game of Thrones, Top Gun. There's quite a few. But some of them are worked in relatively subtly. They're kind of recreations of scenes, for example. Um, for example, there's a, um, if you've watched Game of Thrones, where I, spoiler alert for Game of Thrones, where I, Stark, kills the, the Night King. There's like a scene that kind of lies like that. Uh, there's all sorts of kind of like scenes where if you didn't know the kind of the, they didn't know the property, you wouldn't even know it. So it's just played as a kind of like integrated into the kind of the, the, the sequences and things like that. So I thought it was quite fun. So there are some kind of like um, more broad humour if you like some of that, but it's 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 not as jokey as you would expect. To be honest with you, there is there is there's even some reasonable use of. Um, integrating stock footage, particularly, again, in the drug bus involving these kind of helicopters that I thought was done quite well and even kind of gives you the illusion that it's a, it's a higher budget movie than it is. I think some of the camera work is quite good, um, to be honest. I think the, the cinematography as well, reasonable for this kind of low budget film. However, let's talk about what doesn't work because there is one huge issue with this film and had they addressed this, it would have informed other issues. The biggest one, by far, is this movie is way too long. This movie is nearly two and a quarter hours long. It does not need to be anywhere near this length. Had they, had they made this movie 90 minutes, 85 minutes, something like that, you probably could have had a quite a punchy film. But my God, it did not need to be this long. And the problem is here, is you really feel the length. There is some scenes that you could have just cut out. The, the middle section of this movie is essentially that the characters in this house before the purge. It goes on forever. I kind of quite like some of the scenes, and so particularly between the kind of the uh, the niece and this kind of agent when they're kind of like little flirtation stuff. Again, I quite liked it, but it could have been truncated. But there's there's big sequences. The the action at the end, the kind of the scenes at the end. I, could have been edited down to be actually quite an exciting and action-packed but it's not particularly well filmed and it's just it's too long 
and it, it kind of gets rid of any kind of real tension. I would like to see an edit of this film where it's stripped down to be a much more punchy film, edited so the action sequences were a bit more exciting. Uh, I mean, some of them aren't particularly filmed very well uh, in regards to kind of choreography and that kind of stuff. But the editing is a, is, a, is a big problem here. And this, I think, is the problem where you have a one-man band uh, show. You know, you've got the, the writer, director, producer, and he's done a small role as well. This is clearly, clearly the film that he has wanted to make. And I can clearly see here, he's been reluctant to take anything out. But this is where you need a producer to say, this really is, is not playing as well as it should be. It needs to be a lot more punchy. You know, you could have had just trimmed a load of the fat off of this movie because it, it, unfortunately it really ends up kind of being bloated and it's a shame because I think that this movie could have been a, a real fun kind of like movie where you can it's essentially a parody of, a, of Purge but not one where you're going to be thinking oh this is taking the piss of my franchise it kind of feels quite respectful of the franchise but yeah, they really need to cut that out. It's the, by far and away the biggest problem because it just makes the, the like I say, other, other scenes feel bloated, not particularly kind of like well done. It could have been, it could have been a lot better. Some of the acting here is um, not great. I don't really expect it to be, to be honest with you. It's not a high budget movie. Some of the work was, was fine, but particularly in the beginning of the movie, I found some of the, kind of the characters uh, quite clunky and, and cheesy. Uh, the budget does show through this kind of like the, the one the scenes where we have blood and gore not particularly well had there's one sequence where someone gets their head run over which is okay but a lot of the kind of the the, the, the gore sequences weren't done particularly well had they again consolidated the budget made fewer scenes but the scenes they did have a little bit more high quality this could have been you know this could have been a real good film in some ways uh but as it stands, it ultimately kind of feels a little bloated. Some of the humour here, I mean, humour, you've got to do a successful comedy, you've got to be very, very good because humour is, is different people are going to have different sort of tastes in humour. And this one, although it's by far and away not as jokey as you would expect, some of the jokes here are kind of like feel out of place because of it. Because you have scenes where it feels quite straight for a long time. Then you have a joke about a guy, the police chief, having butt plugs up his bum and things like this. It's kind of like, Wah. you know, it feels a little disjointed and jarring at times. So I think this, this movie ultimately suffers because of this. And I can understand why people would look at this movie and just see it as a kind of a low budget kind of purged parody. Um, and I think you kind of like, they'll miss what could have been actually quite a good film. You could probably still have it as a bad parody, but you had just cut down the running time, cut out some of this kind of these waste of time scenes. The ending just goes on forever as well. You could have chopped 10 minutes off the ending. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not going to be for everyone. It's some of this political stuff as well. I think, you know, it, it certainly has characters that have on PC views, you know, despite the fact that it kind of punches both ways, nonetheless, there's still characters here that I think other people, you know, certain, certain people won't find them appealing to watch. I get that. You know, if you can kind of just look past it like that and enjoy it for a film, there's a good film in there, but it's just too long. Uh, I'll give this one, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Um, I do think there's a, a, a reasonable film in there, but it's just, you kind of got to, look around for it. 5 out of 10, have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.